Hey there, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you are doing this hike and you're going to do the central summit, don't go up this way. Uh, you actually go back around and left. Uh, this is just some random footage of me going up the wrong way, so don't do this. Anyway, I'll be talking about the hike here, so if you want to know more about it, I'll go through my statistics and give you some information about it. So this hike is in Garibaldi Provincial Park in Whistler, BC. It's near a bunch of other popular hikes, such as Panorama Ridge and Black Tusk being the main draws for most people. Uh, this hike is a significant step up in difficulty compared to those. It's about double everything. Double elevation gain, double distance, and a more difficult scramble up to the central peak. The reason for this is that you have to go over Genshin Pass before you begin the actual ascent of Castle Towers. Most people split this hike over two days, and I did so I can get this time lapse here, and to get the golden hour footage. My total moving time was around 18 hours. I started hiking around 5pm on Monday and set up camp around 9pm. The next day I was hiking from 6am and then got back to my car at around 10pm. It was a long one. My stats were about 3200 meters of elevation gain and 40 kilometers distance. I started my hike from Chequemus Lake, where you have to drive on about 7 kilometers of forest service road to get there. It's not too bad, uh, most cars should make it, but I'd probably recommend something with a little bit of clearance. From there you hike up to the Helm Campground where most people camp for the night. The Helm campsite was full, so I ended up booking a wilderness permit for Garibaldi Park. You can see on this map here where the wilderness boundaries are, and I camped somewhere along this ridgeline. Make sure to leave no trace when you camp, and the last toilet is here, in case you don't have a trowel. I ended up following the GPS tracks from this guy here, I'll link his website in the description. Camping reservations can be reserved on this website here, with most of the campsites being booked up if you haven't booked pretty far in advance, but I'm fairly certain that the wilderness permits don't actually run out. There are plenty of flat spots to camp on the ridge, and it's kind of preferable to camp there as opposed to below Genshin Pass as you'll be carrying less on your back for the ups and downs. In late July, there was plenty of water sources throughout this hike. Before Helm Campground there's a river where you can fill up, and then after on the ridge there were a ton of snowbanks that were melting that you can fill up water from. After that the last water source would be the lake at the bottom of Genshin Pass, but definitely bring a filter for that. The distance and elevation gain for this hike make it a huge fitness test. The actual mountain is not that high relatively speaking, but the amount you have to hike up and down going through Genshin Pass and Pulmium Ridge can slow you down considerably. There's two options to get over Genshin Pass. One is you can take the glacier up, where you'll most likely need crampons for, or you can take the ridgeline, which is generally snow free. I didn't want to haul out my ice axe and crampons, so I took the ridgeline. The downside to that is that it adds an extra 2 to 300 meters of gain each way, so it's up to you depending on your experience. The ridgeline itself has quite a bit of up and down before you reach Genshin Pass, where it's a steep walk down rocky, then grassy, then a bit of bushwhacking, and then some muddy steps. From there you hike up to Pulmonium Ridge where you have to lose another 100 meters of gain. It's a bit of a scramble there, with some loose scree bashing to get up to the final uphill part for the west summit. The next part was a big mental drain on me. It's maybe 300 meters of a boulder field that you have to go up, with most of them being solid, but enough loose ones to force you to stay sharp. It was at this part that I saw a few people from the Peak Baking Group that only made it to the West Summit, so I hope you watch this video to see what the Central Summit looks like. For the summit down from the West Summit to the Central Tower, I followed approximately this line. It felt maybe more than 4th class in one or two steps, but all the holds and footholds were there. Going down felt harder, as you have to lean out to see your footholds, but going up felt more like 4th class. You then cut across here, then continue up climbers left to the side of the mountain. You then go up the last gully and you're at the top. There's a decent amount of small loose rocks, so if you're with a party I'd definitely recommend a helmet. In regards to other hikes, I wouldn't say this is too technical, with the only really engaging scrambling being at the very end, and a bit on Pulmonium Ridge. The rest of the hike is just a really long and beautiful slog. Quite the workout, but you get really gorgeous views being in the Garibaldi backcountry. It felt like a big objective, even though the relative difficulty isn't that hard. But again, your mileage may vary and make sure you know your own limits before you go hike it. Have fun.